The 4.3 provides an update on the August drop pod, which looks very hopeful. Some pretty cool unlocks coming around this weekend. Event tier passes could also be a paid thing, which would be kind of weird. And Justin saying clarifies what he said in that interview, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If you want to know more? Stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Community manager Unicheck comes in saying, good news, August drop pod is looking good for next week. More details to come. Most likely meaning this week we'll get some actual details on a blog that was promised about what we're going to be seeing with this. The big thing being cross-core customization coming with this drop pod. Now, so far it's only teased to be visors, but there could be some more. Now for some context of what to expect here from the season one outcome blog that we did cover on the channel here when it first released saying, right now we're pursuing options that will allow players to use certain customization items on different cores. Due to the way the core system is initially built, getting these items to work on various cores will take time, may not even be possible for all items, and will likely require to do it piece by piece. So maybe the first pieces could be visors, but this sounds the second half right here looks a little bit more hopeful. We're saying our initial focus is on enabling as many helmets, visors, and armor coatings across different cores as possible. In short, our goal is that we will be incrementally moving to a model that allows coatings and visors working across all cores with helmets and chest gear working across cannon cores as our first focus changes come to this system. But even though Unicheck only teased us with visors, we could be seeing more stuff when it comes to cross-core customization. Of course, we should be seeing this blog later this week, and then as soon as it does go live, I'll be covering it on the channel for you guys to understand all those details. Now, do you like earning free items in Halo Infinite for customization? I'm sure you do. And also, HTS knows this because this weekend, the Twitch drops for the NA Super were just announced right here, where you can earn yourself a Holy Flare Charm, which is a plasma grenade. Pretty exciting stuff there. That's if you watch at least two hours of HTS available any day one through three, which would be this weekend here, guys. You can see the drops are available for August 5th, 6th, and 7th of this weekend here. And if you watch the grand finals for one hour, you do earn this Mark Seven armor coating, which, come on, does look pretty awesome. Certainly worth grinding for. I mean, just kind of open up your browser and just kind of have HCS open. Now, I certainly did have my hopes up to earn these diamond coatings right here, guys. We did get it for the pistol for the Valencia event, which, you know, I definitely grinded for and got that one for sure. Uh, but I'm definitely looking forward to see when these coatings are going to be coming into the game. And we do know that they will be coming in as a Twitch drop eventually for us, guys. But it looks like not this weekend. Because the head of HTS Tashi did tweet out saying that there are more to come when it comes to these diamond coatings coming into the game. So now we know what the Twitch drops are going to be this weekend, which leads me to believe that these diamond coatings will likely be part of either the major event happening in Orlando in September or the finals in October, which is taking place in Seattle, which I'll be there for sure. If you guys ever see me in Seattle, make sure you stop by and say hi. I'm very excited about this event because it's a complete shakeup of everything HTS. Because there have been major shakeups so basically every single roster besides like Sentinels and Optic and everything else has had some significant changes come in. So what you thought of like the best teams that are going to win are definitely going to see some shakeups. So this is going to be a definitely a new experience when it comes to watching competitive Halo. Because this new phase roster looks nasty with legendary slayers of Spartan, Snipedown, Falcated, and Renegade all put together. This is a god squad put together to go against the best of HCS. So all eyes on phase to see what they're going to be doing. I do have a special video coming out guys this week before the event of some analysis of what to expect for this NA Super guys. I'll be talking with the caster why not be reckless aka tony and also devious ground alliance i brought him on to kind of get some analysis of what to expect for this na super it's going to be a great video make sure you subscribe to the channel to catch it when it does go live next news story here guys is that seems kind of interesting because it, there might be a paid version of events coming with halo infinite right here uh this recent leak of data mined information from halo waypoint talked about this and it's quite interesting now this is just kind of like data mind stuff face value this could be internal language that they utilize which won't actually come out but there's some interesting things here and saying purchase a ticket and would print out to the player saying purchase event tickets which would be interesting now this could be either something tied to maybe just events in general when it comes to halo or are they talking about events in game because events in game have been free and certainly would be a change of pace to get some more revenue out of players i totally could see a paid tier and a free tier happening with event passes though but you see some text lines here saying rewards 
they earned uh, five plus with event tickets kind of thing, uh, go to the event, season whatever number event kind of stuff. So this seems like it might be more in-game related, though I'm not totally sure exactly how this might actually be something that's I mean with Halo Infinite. If it does, you know I'll let you guys know here on the channel, but it does seem quite interesting that that language is being used on Halo Waypoint. So we'll see what comes of it. This could be something that's in development or maybe some internal language that they're utilizing when it comes to purchasing. But we'll, yeah, again, we just have to wait and see what happens with that. So Joseph Sane recently did this interview about talking about games with other developers and stuff like that in this podcast. Now it's rather fluff kind of stuff, kind of more just general theoretical kind of conversations. Though, there was some interesting tidbits that we did cover on the channel yesterday. If you guys missed that video, I'll link it at the end of this video right here. But Joseph saying made some interesting points, sounding like there was going to be like a crafting system within Halo Infinite, which sounded really odd. And he actually hit up Twitter to clarify some of the points and news articles that are being written about this podcast. And I wanted to cover that with you guys as well. Which this whole thing sounds kind of confusing because what he said in the video and what he says on Twitter are kind of two different things. So he first tweets out with the general thank you for having me on. It was a great thing. But then he actually goes into some details which you know me i'm all about those details saying also to clear up some confusion of what i said on social today i joined 343 the campaign was not working on a crafting system in the interview i used it as an example as an open world game system that we all agreed wasn't right for halo infinite in game dev and other game big team endeavors it's essential to define common ground before you move to areas that require more alignment and prioritization no crafting in Halo Infinite was an example of common ground. I recommend watch the whole interview for context. And well, I watched the whole interview and that's kind of what I got out of it. Here's the clip to guys understand what he's talking about. You know, we talked a lot about uh, crafting, for example. Um, and I think my probably uh, infamous line for, to the team was something along the lines of like, Master Chief doesn't need to kill animals to make like leather shirts for himself he's a he's a massive armored super soldier that if he wants something he goes and like kills it and grabs its gun and then like keep, keeps on going he's not he doesn't need to like gather around a campfire and and like cook food in order to like replenish his health he has a recharging energy shield that, that takes care of that for him now i say this with a lot of love for open world experiences and games with crafting in them this is not me complaining about that at all i was just trying to explain to the team in a somewhat humorous way i hope like remember we're halo like we're hate we're a halo open world game and that means that it's really all about that moment to moment most powerful actor in this rich physical simulation being a scavenger on the battlefield, encounter setups, the fun of creating tactics, going in, changing your plans on the fly, like all those things that are a Halo game, plus equipment now and increased mobility with the grapple hook. Let's let's embrace those systems, those emergent first-person shooter gameplay systems. Mm -hmm. The other systems that sometimes come with open world games, that's just not for us. So let's not lose focus and and spend too much time in that in that area. So you can kind of see how he phrased everything. It sounded like when he came in, they were working on a craft system and just saying was like, no, don't do that. That's not Halo. I think if you phrase things a little bit better, put more context of what he was trying to say, people wouldn't be construing it in a way to where there was a crafting system. But I'll take his word for it that there was no crafting system, but just the way he sat made it sound like that there was. If you want to know more what Joseph Stein said in this podcast interview, check out this video up here. If you want to know more about the August update when it comes to cross customization, check out this short video right here. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.